correspondent, and our live coverage continues here at CrimeCon. I'm joined with the mind behind Mile Marker 181 podcaster, Emily Nestor. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I, I appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about the podcast and Julia Davis's story. Well, how much time do you have? <laughs> you know what? We don't want to give too much away for the podcast. Sure, sure. So let's let's just talk about you know who Julia Davis was and what happened to her in, in from the get go in the beginning. Okay, so Julia Davis was a 20-year-old woman from Marietta, Ohio. Um, the Mid-Ohio Valley, where I am from, is roughly 160,000 people. It's a fairly small community. It's, right. you know, one degree of separation. Everyone knows everyone. She was out uh, November the 18th of 2011 with a group of people that she considered to be friends. And by the next morning, she was found dead in the passing lane of um, I-77. Her car was found through of a mile north of her body, her clothes were hanging on the guardrail, and she was essentially, um, she was partially decapitated. So there's a lot of if, ands, buts, there's a lot of unanswered questions. The case was ultimately ruled accidental, but a lot of people think that there was foul play. The last person that was with Julia was the granddaughter of our former sheriff, and the sheriff's department is the investigating agency in Julia Davis's death. Right, and no one has been charged or called a suspect in this case. It's been ruled accidental, though. It's, it was ruled an accident uh, about a year and a half right. after the fact. Got it. What was it like investigating a case like this when it's so close to home? At first, it was just head first into like a 10-foot, you know, pole. Um, I tried to pull back from that a little bit and distance myself. You know, I don't want to be biased. Um, I, and I understand how sometimes it comes across that way. But in such a small community, when you know the routes that the, the people are taking, when they're giving, you know, essentially alibis, it's, it's just... It's just so hard not to get personally involved in it because I'm a local as well and, and I can spot lies quickly, you know, with, with, with their story of what had happened that evening. Um, but being close in the community, it, it's been an interesting year investigating it. Yeah. Um, some people, you know, have no idea who I am when I approach them, which has been really advantageous. <laughs> uh, and, then, and, and then other times, you know, people will approach me and ask me about the case. But I've, I've tried to keep my distance you know, I do have contact with her family. Her family is the only reason that I'm able to do this project, and I want to give them answers, but I don't want to get too close into their personal lives now. Right, right. And so you've talked to the family and a lot of key characters. Can you, I know it's so hard to sum up, you know, a person in one line, but can we talk a little bit about Julia's memory and what they want her to be remembered for? I think the best way, and, and this is my, more my opinion maybe than theirs, but I think she was so young and what everything you know was cut short for her and I think there's a lot of open-ended you know questions about what would she have done with her life what would she have pursued in her career would she be married by now would she have children and I know that that's a sentiment of her family as well um, we're less than a month apart in age and when my birthday came around last year her mom texted me and she said what what are you asking for for your birthday this year because she's trying to imagine what her daughter would have been asking as a 27 year old you know what would you, what would you want like in your life you know birthdays were always a big deal in their family so I, you know yeah it's incredibly difficult it's incredibly them. difficult for them yes yeah. how did you make the jump from you know being a local knowing this story and, and maybe having that kind of visceral reaction to it um, to saying you know what I'm gonna make a podcast I'm gonna look into this on my own um, actually, I mean, I, a lot of it was CrimeCon last year. No way. <laughs> no, okay. it really was. Like, wow. I, 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 I called myself, I was like, I am Miss True Crime 2018. I had the, <laughs> the best time out of anyone in Nashville. Was that your first time last year going yes, to CrimeCon? Yes, it, it was my first time. I ran around like a mad woman the entire weekend and met everybody possible. I had the best time. But before that, more seriously, um, I, I had started listening uh, to podcasts. And I thought it was an interesting format, but I hadn't really given it any thought because I don't know anybody that does a podcast. Oh. At that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Michelle McNamara's All Be Gone in the Dark came out, and I thought it was such a deep dive into that. And, you know, not that she was, I don't think she's an average woman, but she, she was an average citizen doing detective work for her, for her own interest and her own cause. And I thought someone should write a book about the Julia Davis case. And then I thought, well, why am I sitting on this? Like, I could probably do a podcast about it. And that was, CrimeCon was like the final push last year for me. I actually contacted her while I was at a CrimeCon event, uh, Kim Davis, Julia's mother, and said, I, you know, you don't know me, but let's set up a call. And she had responded within the hour. 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. I mean, what a year. Can you imagine? What are you going to do? So what can we expect by next year, this time at CrimeCon? What are some of the projects that you're brewing up? So I've got two podcast projects in the work. First of all, there, there's going to be a season two of Mile Marker 181. Uh, that comes out on the 19th of this month. And, and there, before you get into the others, where can we, where if someone hasn't listened to the podcast, where is it available? Pretty much anywhere you can list a podcast. iTunes, Great. Stitcher, Spotify, all of that. Okay. Uh, YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. And you have another project coming out too? Yes, I, I have two podcasts that I'm working on. One is, uh, it's called Bad at Crime. It'll, it should be out this summer, depending on how this season of Mile Marker 181 goes and how crazy it gets. And that is kind of, a, I sit down with a guest in the true crime arena every episode. Uh, we, get, we get drunk, essentially. <laughs> we drink and we talk about stupid criminals. So uh, I've had the pleasure of having uh, Paul Haynes on, who is Michelle McNamara's researcher, yeah. uh, Paul Holes, and Stephen Ray Morris from, wow. uh, yeah, so you can, so you can cool. look for those guys. And I've got some personal friends that come on as well. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the, the other podcast project is, it's going to be a really, it's going to be heavy hitter. Uh, it's not murder, but it is true crime. It deals with um, intrafamilial sexual abuse, uh, pedophilia, and that's going to be season one of that. So four or five episodes. Yeah. And what has the response been like for Mile Marker 181 so far from, you know, people that listen to the podcast? Well, first it really took off locally, um, and then I got a plug from someone with a lot of influence, and it shot to like 20 on iTunes. I was boarding a flight, and I was like, this has got to be, this could be wrong. Um, but it, it's interesting, too. I try not to read my reviews, <laughs> but uh, the, the more popular it gets, the more people hate it. <laughs> so it's an interesting, it's an interesting aspect, but I think f more than anything, it's generated more questions for the listeners. Yeah. And I, and I, that resonates with me because I totally get it. Like, yeah. I just want answers to these questions and the further I get into it the more questions I have. And so when can we expect season two to come out? June 19th. June 19th. Yeah, uh, June 19th. This year, so that's yes. coming up pretty soon. Yep. Okay. And Not what, even two weeks. Yeah, yeah. And what have you um, been taking part in at CrimeCon? Were you at Podcaster Row? I've pretty much been chained to Podcaster Row, and I'm, I've been very happy with it. I've been able to sit there and talk to people and, and meet people that listen to the podcast, which is great to like see faces of people that actually care about the case um, that, that don't know her or aren't even from the area. Yeah. Um, I did go to the Owl Theory yesterday, which was pretty <laughs> interesting. I popped in on Paul's session today, yeah. and um, I'm going to be, at, we're doing like a Podcaster Mixer later uh, in the in the bar in the lobby so, so I'm cool. looking forward to being with my with my people my podcaster people yeah a jam-packed <laughs> yeah. weekend so I know you're kind of mentioning some um, you're into true crime like even before this podcast I, I don't think I can't remember a time when I wasn't yeah I, you remember Harriet the spy yeah I have book. a picture of myself with binoculars and a notepad where I'm making notes about my neighbor's activity <laughs> so yeah yeah obviously so I've cool. got the, I've got the silence of the lambs tattoo and Clarice is like my hero but. <laughs> so one thing that's been happening is there's a a lot of attendees that can go up to the booth and you know they'll pick their favorite oxygen talent that they would want to call if they were booked in a jail it's kind of on a lighter note to get the conversation going but you know there's Paul Holes there's Lonnie Coombs there's Nancy Grace Ice T Craig Melvin so I want to know who would you call I actually I thought about this the other day and I, oh, really? I put some strategic thought into it oh, okay I want the cold justice team because there's three of them mm -hmm. to help get me out there's only one of the of everybody else, so I, I would want the cold justice team because I need three people to help me get out of Oxygen County Jail. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a good strategy and a good plan. Power in numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be looking out for season two of yes. the podcast. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having the time. Me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And our live coverage here will continue. If you're watching at home, be sure to keep using the hashtag OxygenCrimeCon. Stay tuned.